Well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, we meet again. Hopefully residency is going well so far, or fellowship. Uh, shout out to the fellows. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do today is, uh, last year I did uh, a presentation on better presentation. <laughs> And it was uh, it was the first time I did this, so it was a little too long. So I broke it into two parts this year. So today is part one and part two. It will be coming up, uh, I think, next month. Uh, let me make sure this works. Maybe I need to turn it on. There you go. <laughs> okay, so if you want to scan this, uh, the PDF is available to you. I will give you 20 seconds. No pie charts, that's what I remember. What is it? No pie charts. Okay. Oh yeah, that's uh, that, that's coming up in the future. Sp yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody's good. Yeah. Okay. So essentially, I use two two books. Most of it is from uh, this one. Uh, it's a very nice book. You probably don't need this, but I liked it so much. This is by. Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Schwabisch has a PhD in economics. And if you, if you look him up on YouTube, you come up across a bunch of good stuff that he always talks about charts, whatnot. Uh, so most of what you see today is from this one, uh, but also this book is really good. Uh, so these are essentially talking about how to present your, uh, um, you know, whatever ha you have, right? Your data, your research, whatever you're trying to communicate to your audience. And so essentially it talks about what to do, if, you know, if you're making a handout, you know, it could be for your patients, for your, uh, as a in-service, whatnot, but also uh, what to do in, uh, you know, PowerPoint presentation. So I'm not going to talk about, uh, you know, posters or uh, handouts, but rather uh, just uh, PowerPoint uh, presentations or any similar software, right? I think most of us have access to PowerPoint, so probably most people use PowerPoint, but uh, you know, you can pretty much use the principle with whatever software you use. So hopefully by the end of uh, uh, this talk, you will be making presentations that look like this, right? Instead of the usual default bullet points, you know, like there are bullet points that are not as wordy, so they're about, you know, shorter uh, sentences. The bullet points are scattered around the screen and there are some graphics added, so you're not uh, you know, using the default PowerPoint settings. How do you guys like this slide? You don't like it? It's been enhanced to, it has graphics and... Oh, you still don't like it? Okay, so hopefully you can make something that looks like this instead. Yes, more modern, less words, uh, you know, uh, pictures, you know, sometimes pictures have a role, but you know, hopefully you can use like modern icons, whatnot. I did not make this, it is, uh, you know, from, from the book. Okay, so when you put this side, side by side, I think we all agree that the one on the right-hand side, uh, probably better uh, for the eyes of, <laughs> of the audience, right? Okay, so let's talk about some stuff. So like I said, there are two parts. So part one, I'm essentially gonna focus on better slide design. So we're gonna talk about color color theory, I'm not by any means an expert in color theory, but we'll talk about some principles that we can all use. Uh, type, essentially things related to font and other things that we're gonna consider and graphics. So I put graphics last because usually people just talk about graphics and they don't talk about color and they don't talk about type. So I put that at last, uh, you know, if, if we run out of time, it's like you guys can figure out graphics. And then in part two, we're gonna talk about actual presentation, like, well, what should be your opening uh, statement, closing statement, uh, practices, right? And by, I, I, you know, you should never use me as an example. So I definitely don't, don't follow all the rules. I'm always learning. So, uh, you know, we'll look at some of the principles from uh, this book. So essentially you want to use audience centric design, right? What that means is that you want to visual, visualize your content as much as possible. So the superiority of images over text and the spoken word is largely agreed upon, right? The second thing is you want to unify the elements of your presentation. Uh, so, you know, this means consistency from, uh, you know, your color, your font, uh, you know, uh, the 
overall structure of your slides. You want it to be unified throughout the presentation. And the third thing is you want to focus your audience's attention to what you're trying to talk about, right? Uh, so this could be something, uh, you know, if you have uh, a table, if you have uh, charts, you want to focus the uh, attention of the audience uh, to where you want. Uh, in fact, this slide is quite wordy. This could have been something like this, right? Visualize your content, unify the elements, focus your audience. You see like the more, the more text you put in there, uh, the more it's difficult. And it's tempting to do this because it was easier for me to read it. So if I forget something, I could have read all of this, right? Uh, but it's not good for the audience. So you want to do something that's less worthy. Big, the bigger the size, the better. So that this looks much better, right? And sure, you want. Uh, I have some visuals on the side that uh, I'll show you how to get all those graphics that look fancy. So, okay. So the three things hated by audiences. Doesn't matter what setting, right? So the speaker reads the slides. People don't like that. Don't read your slides, you know, as much as you can. Occasionally, okay, sure, you can look at your slides uh, to see, uh, you know, what's on the screen. Sometimes I have seen people just avoid the screen so much that they're talking about something that's not on the screen because they forgot to advance the slide. So it's okay. It's actually good to look at your slides to make sure it's, it's follow, <laughs> following with what you're talking about. The second thing is the slides contain full sentence. So you wanna minimize, or if you can eliminate full sentences or so bullet points, and the bullet point is just literally so you know what you're talking about. And uh, if the text is too small, right? So good uh, rule of thumb is uh, go to the back of the room. If you can easily read it, that's a good size, right? So because, so, so in other words, in a smaller room, you might get away with a smaller size. If you're in a large auditorium, uh, you really wanna make it as large as possible, right? And regardless of the size, uh, of the room, the larger you can, as large as you can make the uh, size of the font, the better. Okay, so the first thing uh, is color, right? The three things I'm gonna talk about, color, type, and graphics. So first color, okay? So the color theory, right? Have you guys heard of hue? Some people call it the temperature, right? So most of you have heard of it. So we like to think of colors in warm or cool, right? So red, yellow, orange, uh, these are usually uh, considered warm colors. And then blue, green, purple, these are cool colors. So that's one, uh, and, and the reason I'm showing you this, I'm showing you some terminology so that when we go and look at the color options in the PowerPoint, for example, uh, you have access to all these settings, right? So that's hue. And then there is value, right? So for a given color, you can have a tint or a shade. So a tint, uh, essentially you add white to the, whatever color you choose. So it, let's, let's say if uh, you have red, you can add the tint to it. Or you can add a shade, so it essentially adds uh, black to the color. And the third one is saturation. So saturation essentially is the intensity uh, of the color. And I'm gonna show you like uh, some of these options in uh, PowerPoint. So you all have, are familiar with the color wheel, right? Here's the wheel of the color. Uh, so essentially, uh, so the standard, I mean, depends on what color wheel you're uh, looking at. In general, the standard color wheel shows you the hue in the center and then there are shades and things. So for every color, right? So, you know, you can essentially add black or white so you get, um, you know, more colors in the wheel. And then uh, the reason we are interested in all of this is that you want to have some sort of color contrast when you are visualizing your data. So there are different types of color contrast. So one is monochromic. So essentially, this is like a single color and you're uh, essentially playing, uh, you know, it's, it's on the color wheel, it's on the same radius. So if you look at the color wheel, so you can see these are like uh, on the same radius. So essentially you're looking at the tints and the, okay, so uh, here's an example of its use. So essentially, you know how I said you want to focus the audience's attention to what you're talking about. So if you are looking at the chart, if you're talking about this one, so you want the color to be a little different, so you want some contrast in there, right? Uh, so in this color scheme, they use monochromic contrast to highlight that last uh, column bar. Another thing you can do is use complementary uh, contrast. So this is, these are essentially colors that sit on opposite sides on the color wheel. So essentially, if you look at this, so this side is complementary to this side. Um, and I'm going to show you some tools because uh, you may not necessarily have a color bill ready in PowerPoint, but I'm going to show you like where to access a color bill so you can 
Uh, and my favorite is the complementary contrast. Uh, and in fact, it might be actually the most common you see, uh, you know, graphic designers use. So essentially it's across. So you see like, so now if you were to highlight this column bar, um, you, they're using complementary color to highlight it. So I think it stands out more when you're using complementary. Um, then there is analogous. So these are essentially next to each other on the color wheel. So, you know, so you, a color from here and then next to each other. So you go around, but uh, because they're next to each other, that means like, so if, uh, if you cho if you chose a warm color, so it's still gonna stay warm because you're close to each other and vice versa. If you use the cool color, uh, it's gonna be, now you, you see like, this is a little more difficult to see. So they have highlighted New York here. Um, I don't know, is it clear to you? It's it's less, right? That's why I say I I personally like complementary, but these are all different ways to 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 highlight. And then the last one is achromatic, which is essentially uh, just black and white, and then you use different shades of gray to and that may have some utility because anytime you play with color, you also need to consider that there are there may be accessibility issues like people who have color blindness or some variation of color blind, so they may not be able to see some. So if you use too many colors, you always have to ask yourself, are there people in the audience are just not gonna see the colors that I'm intending for them to see? Uh, so, you know, there are uh, techniques to check for that. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, your audience is like a small room, so you can literally uh, know if somebody does or does not have uh, color blindness or any uh, limitation. But you go in a larger audience, like you may not necessarily know, but those are important things to consider when you design your slides. Okay, so when it comes to actually choosing the colors or play with colors in any software, there are different ways to define a color, right? So the most common one is the RGB. So you guys, I'm sure are familiar with RGB. So red, green, and blue. So essentially any color is defined as a combination of these three colors. Uh, Historically, these are uh, this is the scheme that's used for color on the screen because light essential or um, you know old TVs or monitors essentially used to be working with three colors. So any color you see is a combination of red, green, and blue. So you uh, so you know that's one uh, CMYK, which is mostly uh, used by printers. So that's why if you have a color printer, you see four uh, cartridges, right? So those are the four colors. Uh, so you know if you're if you know that uh, you know you're gonna print your uh, slides and that's really, or or a handout and you think that's really important to get the color right, you really want to work with CMYK instead. So you know the colors will actually look like what you intended it to be. With RGB, sometimes what you see on the screen and what prints might differ a little bit. You know, yellow is still gonna be yellow. Uh, you know, but. Uh, especially if you're looking at different like contrasts, it might not quite come the way you wanted it. So those are things to uh, consider. And regardless of whether you use RGB or CMYK, uh, you can get the single hexadecimal code for it. Uh, that's easy because anytime you play with this, so if you're uh, doing RGB, you essentially need to know three numbers, right? So you need to put three numbers in, uh, in the boxes to get the color CMYK. You need four numbers, right? Hexadecimal uh, solve that Trump uh, that problem by you just have a single value that you copy paste into the software that gives you exactly the color you want. And then lastly, uh, there's also the if you really cared about the hue and saturation and uh, you know you you can use the HSL uh, which is available. Has anyone used the HSL? Some of you. Oh. Okay, so you are an advanced Photoshop uh, user. Okay. We'll come to you for our graphics questions. Okay, but what about in PowerPoint? Have you used it in PowerPoint? Hex. Yeah, okay. And Hex wasn't always available in PowerPoint. It's been like, for example, in 2019, it was not available in Office. Um, but, you know, nowadays, uh, pretty much, uh, accessible across office uh, software. Okay, so let me show you some uh, screenshots. So essentially, this is PowerPoint. So I'm just gonna focus on PowerPoint. Uh, so essentially, if you go under design and you click uh, uh, under, um, there's like color themes. So you can choose your color themes. Uh, and sorry if this is too small to see, 
because um, it's a screenshot, I couldn't make it bigger. Uh, but essentially, in recent time, there are newer colors available. So since 2023, the latest office is um, you know considered since 2023 to today. So those are the latest modern colors. Uh, but you can also uh, choose different schemes. And anytime, if you don't like the, uh, and in fact, I, I recommend not to use default colors, right? Because if you use default colors, you look like everybody else. And if you want to stand out and say, oh, this is uh, refreshing to my eyes, you probably want to use your own color scheme. And if you don't want to just go change the colors on every chart you make, uh, you can essentially go here and edit this so you can customize the color. So that way you choose the colors you like. So usually you can choose like six or seven colors that you like. So these are like different accents. Once you make it into the theme, every chart you make, it uses the colors you want. You know, otherwise you're manually are just gonna have to every chart you make go and change the colors, which you know um, a lot of people do. It's just more time consuming. It's not that there's anything wrong with that. Okay. Now colors. So uh, when you select text, you know you guys have seen this, but I'm just trying to make sure we're all on the same uh, page. Uh, so essentially, when you select text, you click the color. So these are colors that are available to you based on the theme that you have selected, right? You can also always use the eyedropper. Have you ever used the eyedropper, right? So if you have a graphic that you really like the color, or let's say you have the Loma Linda logo and you're like, I want the title to be the color of Loma Linda logo, you can just use the eyedropper and click it on the graphic and it will capture the color. Um, um, you know, or if you have like a picture or a graphic from a journal, whatnot, you can always grab the color. You can also click on more colors to define your own color. And that's when the RGB comes in, right? So it's by default, it's on RGB. You can also use the hex. Uh, if it's a graphic or table, uh, you can uh, click on the shape color or, or fill. There's also like uh, the border, but you get more options here. So depending on, so you get the usual, um, you know, colors and eyedropper, but you also may get more options depending on the shape or, uh, you know, if it's a border, you might get uh, things for the border, right? Uh, the other option that in recent time Office gives you, you can actually select high contrast. So it will limit the, have, have you guys seen the high contrast option here? This has rolled out this year, I think, where if you turn it on, it's gonna disable a lot of the color. So you can only choose the colors that give you very high contrast. Okay. Uh, I don't usually use it, but, uh, uh, but anyway, so if you click more color, uh, now here, I, by default it's on RGB, but you can change it to HSL if you, if, you know, if, if hue saturation not mean something to you, you're an advanced graphic designer, you can do that. But hex is always there. And sometimes you also have transparency. So on shapes and tables, you also have transparency that I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, oh, I was supposed to make this bigger, but um, too late. Uh, the other thing is uh, anytime you have a graphic, I just took a screenshot as I was making this PowerPoint, I just used a screenshot of this to show you the option. So anytime you click a graphic, uh, you can click color and it lets you uh, you know, change the tone, change the saturation, so you can play with those things. So those options are available as you play with a uh, color. Um, and if you click on picture color options, you also get more advanced uh, options on the right-hand side. So there are a lot of options available to you that you can play with. Okay, finding color. So we just talked about the eyedropper that you can just capture a color that you like from a logo or a graphic or whatever you want, right? Uh, even if any, your browser, if your browser is open, you can bring the eyedropper and grab, uh, capture a color. Uh, the second thing is, uh, uh, you know, you can use other programs to capture the color. Uh, one thing that's a powerful tool is Adobe Color. Have you guys used Adobe Color? You you have you use a photo, you use Photoshop. So this is free. Photoshop is not Photoshop. Um, uh, uh, well, I don't know. I think it's like twenty. Is it like twenty dollars a month? Isn't it? It's on subscription. Um, yeah. I, so I don't have access to uh, Photoshop, but Adobe Color is free. You just go to color.adobe.com, free account, log in, and uh, maybe I should click on it. Um, let's see if it lets me in. So uh, when you go here. 
essentially you uh, you have you can create your own so this is where you get the color wheel okay first of all you can say oh i want complementary colors so see this is the color uh, color wheel and you can choose different uh, um, you know color modes i like the rgb but essentially so this gives you these colors. these are all uh, com uh, complementary contrast and then it gives you the hexa that you can copy uh, but then you can play with it. You can pretty much uh, move these around, right? You see how you, you move this around, you get different sets of color. And this is free. And then you can save it to your library. And if you don't want to play around with this, you can actually explore their library. They have like a ton of color, uh, color schemes that people have put together, like professionals like her. You, you probably have contributed to... To, the, to, to this library, right? So professionals have already selected a lot of cool colors that you can just uh, choose for free. So, so play with this, including you can actually, when you create, you can actually upload, uh, where is the option to upload? Uh, oh, here. So you can upload a graphic that you have and it will search and choose color theme that goes with your graphic. So it's uh, all of this for free. Yes. Yes. Um, it's colors.co, but colors is P-O-O-L-O-R-S. Yeah, O-R-S dot C-O. And uh, if you just want a really like simple way to just see examples of color themes or color palettes, um, it's not just like, uh, you can go to explore trending palettes underneath start the generator. Uh, Where is it? Uh, uh, oh, here? <laughs> so, yeah. Right there. Uh oh. Um, so it's not limited to just like four or five colors. You can, sometimes they'll make like, Oh, excellent. So similar to Adobe Color. Yeah. Is this free too, right? When you search, you have to pay for like the higher amount. If you want to search, like, I want one with like blue, teal and green, you know, like two different search terms, but uh -huh. just like browsing. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. So uh, I'll add it to the slides for next year. So, so anyway, the point is, don't go with the default colors. There are plenty of professionals out there that are recommending other colors. So go with other colors within reason, okay? So for example, here's a color scheme that goes well with this picture, right? Here's a color scheme that goes with this picture. Imagine like you're opening uh, uh, where you have the title, that's the background and the title, and then the rest of your slides go with this theme, right? Uh, and you know, there are different combinations that you can try. Uh, and then uh, the contrast, you know, again, it's important because you want to focus the attention of the audience to the bar that you're talking about, right? Um, so, you know, these contrasts are good because it stands out uh, for that last column. You see, this is, this is good. So these are examples of good contrast because your attention immediately goes to New York because supposedly I was going to talk about New York on this slide, okay? All right, so here are some recommendations from the book uh, for color use. Minimize using default uh, colors, right? Second is don't stick with black and white only because uh, you can do much better. Avoid too many colors. Okay, so most of these limited to four to six colors. Don't use 16 colors, okay? Don't use the entire rainbow. Uh, unless it goes with the theme, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, you, you, you actually need a rainbow, uh, but in general, avoid too many colors. Use colors that are legible in black and white prints. So you can always go print preview, see what it looks like in black and white, because most people, when they print your slides, they're going to print black and white. Most people are not going to print in colors, right? So make sure they can still read it uh, and the graphics are clear. Uh, use color intentionally for spotlighting, like I showed you with New York uh, in those charts. Avoid red, yellow, green uh, stoplight color system. And this is because, you know, you, you, you've probably seen like a green, yellow, uh, red. It's because you're, uh, you're not really focusing the attention on anyone. Should they focus on green, yellow, or red, right? 
occasionally it's okay. Uh, it's acceptable. Like we like to do it with uh, spectrum of activity of antibiotics. You do green, great activity. Red is no activity. Yellow is like maybe. Uh, but in general, uh, you don't want to do this uh, stoplight colors. And I mean, be mindful of color blindness. And there's this website, you can actually check your colors to see if it's okay for um, uh, people who may have some sort of color blindness. Uh, questions about color before we go to type? Right? Okay, so type. Uh, we're not supposed to say font. It's in general, the category is called type. We discussed type. Font is one of the tools, right? So in general, there are different types of font, right? In general, we like to think of two different types, so serif and sans serif. So serif essentially means little feet. So I like to, you know, if I stand like this, so essentially the little feet. Um, uh, so essentially, uh, you know, a good example is if you look at capital T, you can uh, you can see the feet, right? So if if T is like, oh my God, this is a terrible marker. Um, uh, but you know, essentially, there's like a little feet down there versus uh, no feet, right? Um, I'm going to show you in a in a minute. So the point of serif is that if you're reading small font, they're easier to read. So they're essentially good for newspaper, right? They're good for uh, journals, right? Jamo. I, I don't know if you guys have seen Jamo. Font size is usually really small, right? I don't know if they use size eight or what. Uh, but uh, usually, um, if you have it on the screen, you don't notice because you, you zoom in. But if you actually print a page of JAMA, it's very small. So those uh, those are best to use serif. Sans serif, that means no little feet, right? These are excellent for big. So they're not difficult to read when they are large size. And on screen, we essentially ask you to have large size. So they're perfect for large screen. Now, why not always use serif if they're uh, easy to read small? Why not? Always use it because sans serif looks more modern and they all they look much nicer on the screen. So that's why you on the screen you do want to use sans serif. And here are some fonts. So you see like Times New Roman. You see all the little. Uh, actually, I put the T here so you can see the the bottom of it. You see. So anytime you're not sure, just do a capital T. You can. So these are all good for print. So if you have a handout, right, um, you can you can use this. Uh, otherwise, uh, sans serif. My favorite uh, are actually, uh, we moved on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. Um, so essentially, uh, I have discovered these three funds that I really like, Open Sans, uh, Railway. Uh, in fact, my, my title uh, on my slides, the title are using Railway, and the text is using Franklin Gothic. But you know there are other, other ones that you can use. Uh, don't use Comic Sans, and we'll tell you in a minute why not to use uh, Comic Sans, uh, but those are all sans serif. And you can explore other fonts. So there is Google Fonts. Have you guys heard of Google Fonts? Did you know Google has Google Fonts? Some of you did, right? Free. You go to fonts.google.com, a ton of fonts you can explore, and you can download it for free. Okay, and there are like other websites that you can play with. Uh, so, you know, uh, again, the point is don't use the default font because everybody else is using default font. So if you don't want to be like everybody else, if you want to stand out, you use a different font. Uh, that's nice. You know, don't use, um, you know, very bad fonts that are uh, difficult to read. But, but because people go from presentation to presentation and everybody's using default font, they come to you and you suddenly have a different font. And like, oh, this is... Uh, uh, I don't know what, they may not notice it's your font, right? I'm like, oh, this is interesting. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's appealing to my eyes, but it could be the font. Okay, so these are the recommendations from the book for, uh, for type. So avoid using default fonts, like I said. Limit yourself to two or three fonts. Don't use 16 fonts in your, <laughs> right? So two to three, right? Like I said, like my titles are all the same font and then the body is the same font. So I'm limiting myself to two and then like my section breakers have a different font. So I limited it to three, right? I could have easily done two, uh, you know, but you don't want to go more than that because then it's uh, all over the place. You want consistency. Use a different font for headings, call outs, et cetera. So you can, you know, be intentional about this. Otherwise, if you go by the default, everything is Calibri, right? Uh, uh, or the latest version, it will be the Aptos, Aptos, yeah. 
And Anaptos uh, looks really nice. And in fact, uh, when they released Aptos, not everybody had it. Whoever updated their uh, PowerPoint, they had Aptos, right? So suddenly you stand out. So all the people who are using Aptos or are using Aptos, like, oh, that's that's different. What is it, right? But it's a default font. So it's a matter of time before everybody is using Aptos. So then you go back to the background that everybody's using Aptos. But right now, still the default for most people is Calibri. Um, so, um, okay, uh, if you decide to use multiple fonts, use them consistently, you know, uh, a good, uh, always go to your, uh, what's it called, the mass, uh, slide master, right? Uh, instead of changing fonts on every slide, just go to your slide master, change, uh, have you guys seen the slide master? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, so essentially, if you go to view, go to view, the slide master is up here. You guys see the slide master? And then, um, so this is what I have done. So you click here. I have changed the font for my titles to Railway. And I have changed the font for my body to Franklin. So once you do that there, all of the slides will be updated. So all of them, you, you know, Railway here, it just doesn't do it to the uh, images. So any graphics like this, I had to go, like you see, this is Calibri, this didn't change, so I need to go and manually change this to Franklin. Um, okay, but the actual body, uh, let me find the body, where's the body? Like these, these already changed to Franklin. Okay, but, uh, but anyway, uh, you go to Slide Master, uh, you can change, uh, it's, it's essentially like a template, template for your, for your PowerPoint. Okay, where was I? Uh, I was here. Okay, that way you make sure that it's consistent throughout your uh, presentation. Uh, avoid page numbers. How many of you like page numbers? Get rid of page numbers. Because people are looking at your page numbers and you are looking at your page numbers like, oh God, how many more pages do we have left? It's a distraction, it's unnecessary. Everybody's recommending do not use page numbers. It's, um, you know, it, does, it doesn't do good for everybody. So get rid of your page numbers. I, used, I loved page numbers. I used page numbers for many years. I read this book, I got rid of all my <laughs> page numbers. Um, okay, uh, make your text bigger like we talked about. Um, oh, you can use the slide sorter. You, you guys know this view when you go to see all your slides. So a good rule of thumb is uh, if you go here and you can read your slides, that means it's uh, it's large enough. If if you go here and you cannot read, now I have another problem that this is a poor, uh, this pro uh, projector is bad to begin with. So maybe I can read it just because of that. But if you go on your screen and you can read your own slides in this view, it's probably large enough. If you cannot, that means it's too small. Uh, number seven is declutter and use less text, as we discussed before. When possible, convert your text to visuals. Oh, I'm going to show you a, a hack. You guys, uh, so for example, you see anytime, uh, have you guys ever done the convert to smart art, right? Most of you done, right? That's like a, such a, so just uh, type four bullet points. You just right click, you go convert to smart art, and then you can, you know, play with different things. Right, so you decide, you, once you click it, then you can go here and you can even change it even more so you can play with different things, right? You see how quickly, uh, so that's, that's a good hack, but I don't like this, so I'm gonna go back. Do you have, um, I think it's a lot when people say like, you should put everything on the slide so people can go back to reference them later? So it depends on what you're doing. Like if you're teaching a lecture, but it's for students. So in fact, uh, my lectures have full sentences because I want them to read them, right? It's, it's like uh, um, material to study for a test. In a, if you're doing a TED talk, you may not even have PowerPoint, right? You're just going to stand there. Occasionally you might have, so you need minimal. So it just depends on the what you're doing. If you're doing patient education, if you just had bullet points and you talk, the patient is not gonna remember everything you said. So you probably wanna put more things that the patient wants to read. If you're presenting to um, you know, uh, physicians, for example, uh, 
you pub the, you probably can get away by having more like uh, visuals like charts tables like tables usually a big thing like uh, first line recommendation alternative uh, as opposed to a lot of uh, bullets so, so you, you just have to assess your audience um but okay how far did i go number nine use color intentionally uh, okay, we talked about that. Uh, use layering approach. So layering approach uh, is, for example, you have three bullet points. These are the three bullet points, okay? Instead of having them all here and you talk about them one by one, you present them one at a time, right? That's layering. And then you go to the second one. They say, in fact, when you go to the second one, you deem the first one. So now they're no longer going... Uh, back to the first point. So they're really just paying attention to the second one. And then you go to the third one, you deem the first two, and then the attention is on the third point. Um, you know, and you can actually have three slides for this, right? The first slide only had the first point. Instead of animating it, you can literally make multiple slides. So that way it's easier to deem them when you go slide by slide. So since they said that, I started to do the same thing. Uh, Moving forward in this presentation, I will do the layering. Uh, so I deem the first one, uh, the first four points. Okay, the next one is embed the font in PowerPoint and PDF. So when you play with fonts, anytime you're not using the defaults, you are at risk that if you go to, uh, you know, wherever you're presenting, if they don't have the font in the machine, you're screwed. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to the options, go to the save, this is in PowerPoint. You want to check the embed uh, fonts in the file and click uh, click embed all characters. So when you do this, it will hold the font in the PowerPoint file. So wherever you go, if the font is not available, you're not in trouble. It will bring the font with you, okay? But that's important because if they don't have it, you, you're gonna panic last minute. And, and PDF already does this by default. So if you save it in PDF, you don't have to worry about font. Okay, what question do you guys have about type? before we jump to graphics. Good, okay. So then uh, most of you are graphics experts. Uh, so uh, this one uh, should be easier. In general, uh, you want to make your images, uh, uh, you want to use images, but also don't be afraid to use them full screen, right? So imagine, here's a, here's a slide, it's very wordy. We want to improve it by adding a graphic. So we got rid of some of the text and we added the graphic, right? Don't be afraid to make this full screen. Take it, in fact, you know, uh, so the text is on top of the graphic now. It's much more immersive, right? And you can do it different uh, versions, like maybe you want to bring it down. So anytime, it's, if, it, if you decide it's uh, difficult to read based on like the clothing was behind it, you can add like a background to your text box, right? So you can click the bucket uh, for the paint bucket and add graphic. You can even play with the transparency on these. Uh, like uh, I think that like you can a little bit see through this, right? So there's like a little bit of transparency or better yet, get rid of that. Just, you know, uh, just talk about it, right? This looks much uh, uh, more uh, immersive, but also let me go back. Uh, so the, you see how the initial image, this is the full head, right? This is not the full head. This is called bleeding out of the screen. So not only go full screen, but bleed out of the screen. It, be, it makes it more immersive. Um, I, I, you know, now this is like a general, a generic example, but depending on your topic. So if it's, uh, I don't know, like bacteria, what have you, you can have like this massive image that bleeds out of the screen. So uh, looks more uh, immersive. Okay, uh, so transparency. So anytime, so like, like you know, uh, you can add the uh, background paint to text box, to tables, uh, to, to shapes, right? So not only can you ch change the color, but you can also change the transparency. So you can uh, play with the transparency so you can kind of see through it. Sometimes it makes it uh, look nice. Uh, depending on the software, they may call it alpha, um, alpha channel, right? Uh, PowerPoint calls it transparency. Have you guys played with uh, transparency? Yeah, yeah, most of you know this. Okay, uh, so here are some tips. Unify the image and text. So for example, if you have an image, uh, this is Seth Godin, you guys know Seth Godin? He's like a, uh, if, if you look him up on YouTube, his, his talks are, 
he, he's like in marketing, but uh, his talks are so good. You you find yourself sitting there for an hour just listening to them. But anyway, you see how here's the text and this is the image and it's looking away from it. It's as if it disagrees, he disagrees with this. But if you are strategic and you put it so that he's looking at it, that people don't get the impression that he disagrees. So it's sometimes these little things you, that you got to pay attention to. Um, the other thing is, it's usually better not to have the person in the per, uh, in the center. You can move it. Uh, and I believe uh, in PowerPoint, you can get the grid line so you can show you. Uh, so, you know, if you move this out of the center, uh, it looks uh, better. And then how do you find good graphics? Uh, noun project, have you guys used noun project? If you have not used noun project, your life is incomplete. <laughs> Free of charge, like excellent icons, high quality. Uh, I, I actually, I think some of the stuff might be paid, but a, a ton of free content on there. Uh, so, you know, uh, anytime you need icons, because Office comes with some icons, but there's only, um, you know, certain amounts. So sometimes I don't find what I want on uh, in the Office icons. But you go to Noun Project, and you get a ton of stuff uh, for free. There are other tools. Uh, Canva, I'm sure you guys have used Canva. Canva, you uh, nowadays... You can make a whole presentation. You don't even need PowerPoint if you go to Canva, right? Uh, but you know, um, and then of course, Office 365 comes with a ton of uh, free graphics. So you can search images, icons, uh, um, cut out people, stickers, illustrations, and cartoon people, right? Now, you guys uh, remember there used to be a Microsoft clip art? Yeah. Uh, some of you younger may not have uh, used Office th during the, that time, but uh, using clip arts is a bad idea. And that's why Microsoft retired it. It, it doesn't exist anymore. Do, do not go to other websites to find clip art. I don't know, I guess maybe if you're doing a geriatric presentation, maybe they'll appreciate it. But in general, uh, it was a thing in the 90s and 2000s and modern day people don't, don't like them. Uh, but anyway, uh, make sure to use graphics. You know, the more you use charts, diagrams, arrows, lines, uh, blocks of color, the better, right? Uh, do, I'm doing the layering thing. Uh, do not use clip art. Uh, actual photography of real images communicates uh, credibility and legitimacy to the viewer, so much better. Uh, now, icons is separate, right? This, clip art is different. Clip art is like cartoonish, you know, like shapes, whatnot, uh, it's different than icons. Icons are the modern version, uh, they're okay to use. Now choose high quality graphics. Uh, when you play with your uh, file formats, uh, SVG probably the highest uh, quality because they're scalable, right? But they're difficult to find. Uh, PNG, excellent. Uh, uh, JPEG, you have to be careful or JPG sometimes they call it, right? because JPEG could be high resolution or low resolution. So if you have a low resolution JPEG, it's gonna look bad. So you wanna have a high resolution JPEG. Um, and uh, if you're thinking of transparency, so for example, let's say you just have a shape and you don't want any white around it, right? You want transparency, uh, uh, only SVG and PNG can do it. JPEG cannot do that. Um, and then uh, create your own uh, tables when possible. So anytime you have a table of results from New England Journal of Medicine, it's very tempting to take a screenshot of it and put it in there. It's usually a better idea to generate your own table because you can get rid of the rows that you don't wanna talk about and you can highlight the cell that you're gonna focus on. A p-value is significant, you can highlight it, right? Uh, so in general, it's good. And, and you know, sometimes we don't have time. So you know, it, it's okay if you wanna take a, screenshot and use it, uh, you know, but when you can, it's usually a better idea to make your own tables. Uh, use emotional images, tap to the emotions of your audience, right? Like you're doing a pediatric talk, uh, you know, a child on a mechanical ventilator is a very emotional picture. You know, you put that full screen, you bleed it out of the screen, you know, that's, that's gonna touch the emotions of your audience. So. So, you know, those are things you can do uh, with emotions. Uh, make your image full screen large and bleeding, like I mentioned. 
Uh, number six is unify the image and text by having the subject look at the text, uh, like we looked at Seth Godin. Uh, replace bullets with icons, right? So at the beginning, I showed you that picture, like uh, instead of the bullet points, just have the text next to an icon. You can just put icons and you can be intentional with the icons related to um, to whatever uh, you're talking. So if it's like immunization, it could be like a syringe, uh, what have you. Okay, oh, that, uh, that was the last one. Okay, uh, what question do you guys have? Those like big images, yeah. Why would you kind of optimize utilizing them versus because you wouldn't use it like for every image you have in your PowerPoint, right? Like, so when what opportunities would you do that? Um, okay, so a good example would be let's say, um, um, you're talking, uh, you're talking about a randomized control trial, right? So you have a slide, you talk about uh, the design of the study, who were the patients, uh, what was the intervention control, right? And then you talk about maybe perhaps next you have a table of the results. Then you get to your takeaway from the study conclusion, right? Here's your opportunity to have just a single sentence on the center of the screen. Like, this is what I want you to take away from the study, right? Um, and then you can have like an image that's related to the topic. So uh, I don't know if it was, if it was, um, you know, uh, COVID in the ICU, you can have someone on a mechanic or, or someone on ECMO, for example, you can deem it and put it in the background and bleed it out, uh, you know, and then you're at the center is the, t uh, you know, key takeaway from the study. Uh, that way they know the patient who was in the study and, uh, you know, it's emotional. Someone is on ECMO. ECMO looks, I don't know if you guys have seen ECMO, you know, it's eye-opening <laughs> once you see ECMO. And, um, you know, so that's that's one example. Mm -hmm. uh, what other question do you guys have? Yes. For like our CE and didactic lectures, how far are we able to deviate from the Loma Linda template slides? Like, are we able to go like change the template slide, or do we have to use the Loma Linda template? Pretty much, I think we're required or like a big institution to use that before doing presentation on the side. Mm -hmm. And because your CEs are, you know, reaching outside LWH, they want us marketing, central marketing wants us to use template. And I, I'm sure you can play with it, um, but I don't know if you have any advice on this. I'm sure minimally. You could do uh, some changes if you wanted to, but it's pretty much an instrument. Yeah, I absolutely hate the template. So, uh, so what I do, I definitely use the template. They don't tell you not to change the font. They don't tell you not to change the color, right? Um, so I do. I definitely use the template. I change the. I, you know, so you. I make uh, changes. So uh, the. The beef I have with the template is uh, how much space. It, it doesn't utilize the space well. The bullet points are atrocious, right? Mm -hmm. Who uses the double, um, uh, you know, it's the antithesis of this book, right? Um, so what I do is I absolutely use the template. So it has the Loma Linda logo on it. Uh, you know, I just move things around. I, uh, you know, don't be, you know how I said go pictures, go full screen. Guess what that does? That covers the template. Bleed out of the screen, you're using the template, but it's uh, covering <laughs> what you don't want to see. And anybody asks you like, well, I absolutely use the template, but you know, I put other content in there. So I hope that helps. Yeah. Uh, don't use a default font. <laughs> I don't know what font is in there. Um, but that's that's coming from the universities outside of our uh, control, or I would have um, changed it. Other questions? Uh, so I didn't know how much time this would take. Uh, so since we have uh, some time, I was just going to show you a couple of techniques. So the first thing that's uh, to your... Uh, um, 
and 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 Catherine, I I do have the slides. If you uh, I know you weren't here when we um, if 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 you want, you can take a picture of that. It has the PDF. Uh, how many of you do the transitions when you go from slide to slide, right? So, uh, so that's the other thing, right? Oh, and I forgot to tell you about Comic Sans. Let me tell you about comics. Uh, comics. So don't use Comic Sans. In general, it's considered unprofessional, right? In our field, uh, the only exception is if you're presenting to children, if you are in the pediatrics in the pediatrics world, by all means, use Comic Sans. It makes it like chill, you know. Uh, but in general, it's considered not the most professional font, uh, you know. So people may disagree on this, you know. But as far as I can tell, most people agree that Comic Sans. You do not want your resume to be in Comic Sans, right? You do not submit your letter of intent to residency in Comic Sans, right? And you shouldn't do, uh, if you're presenting a CE, don't use Comic Sans. Your email should not be in Comic Sans, right? Uh, and I don't understand, people get into debates like, they're like, oh, I disagree with this. Uh, this. Oh, well, if, if a good chunk of people agree that this is unprofessional, why do you want to risk, right? Because somebody in the audience is going to think you're unprofessional because you use Comic Sans. So I say stay away from Comic Sans. Unless you're presenting to children at the children's hospital, then by all means, use Comic Sans. I think it's kids friendly. Uh, so that's about Comic Sans. Uh, the other thing I was going to show you is, oh, the transitions, right? So transitions, people say, oh, uh, you know, and also animations. You don't want it to be too distracting, right? So like I use mostly the push, right? Uh, the push wasn't too distracting yet. It was like, uh, I don't know. How did you guys feel about the push transitions? Not to worry. It was, it was quick. It didn't waste time. And it was not the default, right? And uh, it wasn't too distracting, okay? Uh, now, I could have done things like, uh, let's see, what is fracture? Fracture, okay, that's probably pushing it. Um, crush, I don't recommend crush. Airplane, definitely don't, don't do it, okay? Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, what is, oh, origami. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do any of this. Unless you're at the children's hospital, then by all by all means, you're presenting to a group of uh, children. Uh, you know about uh, their medications. Uh, by all means. But but here's the your here's your friend, morph. How many of you have used morph? What did you do with morph? Excellent. Morph. If you haven't used Morph, you have not tapped into the full potential of Power uh, PowerPoint. Okay. So uh, let me see which one did it. Is this the one I did Morph? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, uh, um, let, let me construct something for you. So here's a slide. Uh, I'm just going to uh, here's a white box, okay? I'm just going to copy this in here, okay? And I'm going to put it here. So everything is covered, okay? You guys see what I did? And I'm just going to duplicate the slide. So here's the first slide. I'm going to put no nothing here. So, so it's important you have to duplicate it so the objects are exactly the object in the previous slide, okay? So now in the second slide, this white box is exactly the object in the previous slide. I'm just gonna make changes to it, change the size, right? Actually, I'm just I'm only gonna change the size, bring it down to here. It's the same object. And I'm gonna click morph. So what it does, it morphs from every other object stayed the same, but that white object is the only one that changed. So it's smoothly, uh, you know, change the size of it. So that's one thing. The other thing is, uh, like she mentioned, uh, uh, let me see if I have done it here. Yeah. So, so you see, like uh, here, I put the content of the next slide up here, and I move them around, and I put the content of the current slide 
under uh, in the next slide, and then I morph that. Uh, so, so here's what it would look like, right? So here's, uh, here's the slide. And remember, in the next slide, I put this stuff at the bottom, and the stuff of the next uh, slide is at the top, is like all scrambled. So here's what it looks like. You see? Yeah. So, so morph, you can do a lot of stuff with morph. So if you haven't used morph, you got to play with it. There's a lot of good things you can do with it. Um, and then one more thing I will tell you, Zoom. Have you guys used Zoom? Zoom as in not, not the, like insert Zoom, um, over Zoom. Uh, Uh, where did Zoom go? Oh, here it is, under links. Uh, okay, so Zoom, you can do summary Zoom, section Zoom, or a slide Zoom. So if I wanted to go to like this uh, slide, I'm just gonna put it so it, uh, this is like gonna be on the side. So I'm just gonna, uh, so you see like it inserted that here. And I'm also going to go under the zoom here and say return. And then when I go to this screen, so you see how there is a, th this in the right hand side, when I click it, it goes here and then go back. So this is like, so, let, so let's say you have your post uh, questions on uh, CE and uh, you wanted to refer to the slide that explains the answer. You can quickly click on it. It goes there and then comes back. That's called the Zoom. But these are some, some stuff you can use. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, what question do you guys have? Good. All right, well, thank you. And uh, good luck with your uh, presentation. Thank you for uh, joining joining me today. Thank you. Thank you.